In a world of YouTubers that are all fighting to own a long tail keyword phrase and be as rankable for that phrase as possible, one man stands out from the crowd. One man forges his own path, trailed with the blood of guitar shit posting and Michael Scott from The Office, Rudy Ayub. To me, creators like Rudy Ayub are representative of a new generation of YouTuber. A pioneer of a new focus of content and dare I say, a counterculture response to the last five years of YouTube. One that is still playing the game of YouTube, but capturing people in a completely different way than the YouTube gurus tell us to. So in this video, I wanna take a look at the way that Rudy Ayub and other creators are completely redefining the way that you can grow on YouTube. Hey, hey, hey. don't forget to tell them to subscribe and turn on the bell. I mean, I was getting to it, dude. Like, I had, the video hasn't even started yet. Like, they don't even know if they like what I'm doing yet. I wanna make sure that they know this channel is gonna be super valuable, entertaining, and informative all in one package. Like, it's a lot to really represent, and I don't wanna jump the gun yet. Let them make their own decision, okay? I'm sorry. I love you. And I love you too. Okay. I'm gonna get to the video. One of the biggest things I'm seeing right now is a return to the roots of YouTube where it's really about connecting with the audience at its core and ignoring a lot of the things about inflating your watch time to 10 minutes or you have to stuff this many keywords in your description or anything like that. And I think Rudy's sentiment here is incredibly valuable. Yeah, yeah, you need to find, the, you need to find where you wanna, basically something you like to do, something that they like to watch. You need to find that in between. Mm -hmm. And basically, I like to do this. It's not like really an in-between. It's just like, it's easy for me to make. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting and even it's fun to come up with these ideas. To get a better understanding of this, we need to take a look at the golden rules that a lot of creators have been following and why Rudy's content works so well despite not following most of them. The two pieces of advice that a lot of people give creators is one, make videos that are 10 minutes or more. It can increase watch time, it allows you to put on mid-rolls for your ads, and of course YouTube likes when people stay on the platform longer. And a lot of times they say that the trick is to find something that is searched quite a bit but not too competitive, finding that sweet spot, and then going after that tag or series of tags repeatedly so then you kind of dominate that corner in that group of words and phrases. But Rudy's content has all of the wrong titling, isn't taking the tags and packing them in the description, super short videos that are like 30 seconds to maybe four minutes max. It's very straightforward production value, no fancy edits, and if anything, it's gotten more streamlined and raw instead of more complicated and ornate over time. So for a creator that isn't playing by the standard rule book, how do you determine what's going well, what's working, and what's not? So after my channel started succeeding, like older people, like my dad and some other people I know, they're like, Rudy, you have to, uh, have to do music. You're good. You're good at music. So you have to play music. People want to see you play. And I'm like, guys, my channel did not succeed because I'm doing music. It succeeded, succeeded because I'm doing these dumbass memes. People come here to laugh. They're not coming here to listen to music. There's like 20% of my viewers who would enjoy this, but the rest will not. And then at one point, I had to like make an ad, I think, for IRs. And it was the first time I introduced that, you know, talking to myself. And because I wanted to make it interesting. And this is how I did it. And I'm like, okay, this, this is fun. It's fun to make. It, it doesn't bore me to death, it like covers. I built on that and people started liking it. I'm like, wait, hold on. Not a lot of people are doing that kind of comedy mm -hmm. in my uh, in the like guitar metal whatever jazz shit posting side of YouTube I'm like, okay, I'll just keep building on it and see where it goes. And that's what I think a really important point is. It's more about connecting with somebody than like picking the perfect keyword. So now I want to take a more historical look. And to do that, we have to go back all the way to the mystical land of 2012. As YouTube became more popular and became a publicly accepted revenue possibility, people really started to up their production game. People using their phones in their bedroom, talking to it really casually, started upping their camera, their gear, their editing chops, and really it started to more feel like production companies in high budget films instead of a one-on-one -on -one connection. Combine this with the insatiable hunger to just get your video to the 10 minute mark so you can put in mid rolls, and it really just lost that personal connection that we all became used to when we started watching content on YouTube. As we 
know, trends go in circles and almost as a response to the kind of hyper produced content we got used to, you see creators like Rudy. And this doesn't apply to every single YouTuber because not everybody jumped on the bandwagon of making super highly produced content, very cinematic and very crazy high budget feeling stuff. But this really was the time when we started to see the return of people just really looking to connect with somebody online instead of looking for a more cinematic experience. And another word for this is a parasocial relationship, which is where you have a one-sided relationship where you, the person watching the content, feels like you know the person, although the creator themselves has no idea who you are. Enough meta content talk, let's dive into hey. the numbers. Boo! Bad segue sentence. Come on, man, you can write better than Dude, that. Dude, seriously, there's no need for this right now. Like, I thought we said no more interrupting while I'm filming. And what's the consequence for that? <sighs> I have to bathe you for a week, yeah, I know. That's right, why don't you go ahead and get the bath ready. I'll, I'll, I'll be there in a few minutes. You know, take your time though, okay? Love you. So we can't talk about a channel like this without talking click-through rate and watch time. So that was music. Basically, watch time wasn't that great on it. It was like normal, like what, 50, 60, 40 percent mm -hmm. even. But what happened with these like skits and sketches I'm making is that you have to wait until the last second, to see what happens. So, uh, so everyone who watches them and you know gives you know a crap about what's going to happen has to watch at least 80 percent of the video. So the watch time is on average like above 80 percent on these. And in case you are not familiar, click-through rate is simply the amount of people that click on your video when they see it. So if your video is shown to 100 people and five people click on it to watch, that is a five percent click-through rate. And watch time can be broken up into two different things because we have the raw amount of watch minutes they do on the video as well as the percentage of the video that they watched. And this is where these short form video channels do so well. So a very good click-through is about 10%, but a lot of Rudy's videos are in the 13 to 16 or even higher percentage click-through rate, which in its own self is incredible. And on top of that, because he has very, very short videos, it's kind of this whole setup for a punchline. So of course you're gonna wanna see how it ends. And then you watched the whole video. So he ends up with incredible, incredible watch time percentages at 80% or higher. So of course YouTube's gonna think that this kind of content is super, super quality because people are clicking on it and then they're staying and watching the whole thing. That's, what more do you need? So with the viral nature of these new creators, we're seeing them explode at unprecedented rates. And for example, Rudy has only been on YouTube since February 2018, but he already has 127,000 subs. And doing so without following a lot of these guidelines, like the 10 minute mark or daily content is what you need to feed the algorithm. I actually don't feel like I'm pushing myself a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some people say, oh, you have to post every day for the algorithm to work. YouTube favors, you know, daily. That's like, like that's dumb, you know. People can, can post once a month and still, you know, succeed. Yeah. But how, why I'm doing it three days a week is just because, you know, every other day, I have free time, and mm -hmm. I have an idea. Why not film it? The only macro guidance that they need is that they need to macro guide their audience. They, you need to know, you need to decide who your audience is. You're, you're gonna be like, okay, is it gonna be like? Um, guys between the ages of 16 and 25 who like jazz, okay. That's my audience, how, are, how am I gonna reach them? How are they gonna find me? When breaking down a lot of YouTube stuff, I tend to come back to the whole like create authentically thing. But in this case, I, it's even more meta than it normally is. And it's like this more meta sense of authenticity where it's not predicated on following a set of rules and abiding to that. I think these walls are breaking down more than ever. And it's very apparent with a creator like Rudy because he might be uploading three times a week, but there's channels that are crushing it to upload once a month, maybe even once every two months or once every two weeks. And there's really just has hasn't been any rules for this new generation that's coming up. If they don't know who their audience is, they can keep trying to post videos, you know, attracting one of everyone, but it doesn't really work. Yeah. Until they really, their, their content is really locked down on, like someone, people need to see your channel and, and they're like, okay, I feel this when I watch this. This is where I come to feel this, to, you know, whatever. And if, it, if, they, if they don't get that from your channel, they're not gonna come back most of the time. So of course it has to urge people to want to click it, which I just don't like the word clickbait because it's like you need to be honest with your clickbait. So like honest bait? 
but of course it has to be good quality content with no fluff if you're gonna get people to stick around. Because if you have like a three minute video and you're losing 80% of your audience 15 seconds in, YouTube is going to assume that that video is bad. So now we have this perfect storm where creators like Rudy are creating stuff that isn't based around like, I have to make this phrase worded a certain way so I can rank for this keyword. It's just, no, how can I relate to the people around me and the people that I wanna connect with? And then that leads to great, fantastic numbers on the back end. And for somebody specifically like Rudy, it's smaller, shorter, more simpler style videos as you can pump them out at a high frequency and all of that is culminating in explosive, explosive growth with this new generation of creators. Also, was I right that you're a big fan of The Office? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, to, yeah, that, that's just an aside because I'm like, fuck, I feel like he really loves The Office because I, Office that's so my favorite show, yeah. hands down. Yeah, yeah. So w when I start watching your shit, I'm like, oh damn, this is like Michael Scott on the internet and but for metal guitar. Yeah, yeah. And it, okay, good. 